All right. So I'm going to be speaking about Forcity, software that helps the uh, optimization for calculating topography guided LASIK treatments. And the emergence of topography guided LASIK came about due to a desire to correct higher order aberrations in the eye in a matter that was a little bit more stable and predictable than what we'd done in the past. This being the Wavefront Congress, we all know that correcting higher order aberrations improves quality of vision. But Wavefront guided techniques suffered from some drawbacks. Since the majority of, cor of corneal aberrations are responsible for the higher order aberrations in the eye, the majority of higher order aberrations in the eye, if we can correct the corneal aberrations, we can correct the vast majority of irregularities in the visual axis itself. And some advantages that topography guided has is that it's not dependent upon pupil size. It can be measured reproducibly. So there's not variability in all the analyses. It's unaffected by lenticular opacities and vitreous opacities. And another advantage is it can accurately measure peripheral corneal irregularities, which can be responsible for many visual complaints, particularly at night, that are not necessarily accessible with other methods. If we look at this particular cornea on the left, we see the higher order wavefront for the eye. These are the aberrations picked up by an aberrometer. We see on the right-hand side, the topography that's gonna to be corrected by topographic guided LASIK with the areas in purple and red being the most elevated where the most tissue is going to be ablated. And as you compare this trefoil pattern of the topography irregularities to the actual higher order wavefront abnormalities, you can see how these corneal topographic irregularities are causing the wavefront abnormalities that are picked up on the wavefront aberrometer. So how is this done in clinic? Well, the patient is brought before a placido disc topographer, a series of six, eight, or 10 images are taken of the cornea. The images are compared for quality and consistency. And then the surgeon has control over the sphere and the astigmatism magnitude and axis, but does not have control over the topographic irregularities being corrected. These are corrected by the software itself. And every cornea is different. Every cornea has different shape, different topography. Here we're looking at four different corneas and you can see the topographic corrections are slightly different for each eye. Now in 2013, Alcon sought FDA approval for Contura topography guided LASIK in the United States. The results were surprisingly good. And at one month post-operatively, 88% of patients had uncorrected visual acuity of 2020 or better a very surprising 59% could see 2015 or better. The problem is in the FDA study, only perfect corneas were allowed into the study. And in real life, actually, we see some corneas that have a lot more different topography. So my data is in pink, Dr. Canalopoulos' published data is in yellow, and you can see that neither of us here were achieving the 2020 uncorrected levels in the FDA study, and we really fell behind at the 2015 level. This prompted Dr. Canalopoulos to seek better ways to treat. And he came up with a landmark paper in November of 2016, introducing TMR, topography modified refraction. And in topography modified refraction, what Dr. Canalopoulos recommended is that we no longer treat the astigmatism measured at the foropter in the manifest refraction, but rather we treat the full measured anterior corneal astigmatism that was being identified, even though the measured anterior astigmatism could in cases be quite different from the manifest. And this came about because Dr. Canalopoulos had a brilliant observation. The manifest refraction is the best spherocylindrical correction for the eye at that time. But once the topography is corrected, once these ridges are removed by topographic guided treatment, that spherocylindrical lens that was found in the clinic is no longer the correct correction for that eye. And at that point, the anterior corneal measured astigmatism is much more accurate. TMR often resulted in perfect corneas. This is one of my patients three months post-operatively treated with TMR plan contra. This cornea was beautiful, 0.0, .0 diopters of anterior astigmatism uh, at the pentacam. Unfortunately, this particular patient was an outlier, had very poor uncorrected vision of only 2070 and was asking at the foropter for 1.75 diopters of astigmatism. The reason for this is this particular patient had significant lenticular astigmatism. 
So this patient underwent a clear lensectomy. I placed a single focus IOL, non-toric, and the astigmatism disappeared, showing conclusively that the lenticular astigmatism was present and responsible. So the difficulty with planning Contura topography-guided treatments off the manifest refraction is that Contura ignores the effects that the topographic irregularities play on that manifest refraction. TMR was a huge step forward, but it ignored the fact that sometimes other aspects of the eye play a role. There can be lenticular astigmatism or posterior corneal astigmatism, which should be considered. So what was needed was something different, an analytical mathematical approach, we needed predictive effects of combining topography treatment with the true anterior corneal measured cylinder. And we needed the ability to predict significant contributions from the posterior and cornean lens when they were present. So I began to think about how does the real world deal with topography? We have these very complex three-dimensional structures in the real world. They're often represented by two-dimensional maps. And it turns out there's software known as geographic imaging software that can look at a flat two-dimensional map and pull a lot of technical information about the complex three-dimensional structure from that map. This is what we are given with topography-guided LASIK analysis. We're given a two-dimensional map of a very complex three-dimensional corneal surface. And so I began to work on using GIS software to help analyze the topography treatment maps we were given by Alcon. And if you think about it, these curved purple areas are raised curved areas on the surface of the cornea and they're active small lenses. A lens is simply a curved surface with a different refractive index of the cornea versus the air above it. So because these are small lenses, they are actually amenable to the mathematical and physical attributes of lens theory. And so therefore we can figure out the refractive effects that these areas of elevation can have and what effects are present when they're removed. And sometimes these areas of topographic elevation are quite significant. This is another outlier patient. This patient in the clinic was asking for 1.25 diopters at 90, but the measured anterior corneal astigmatism was quite different, 1.5 diopters at 170. And to flip the axis from 90 to 170 required a 2.75 diopter shift. The white bar represents the minus cylinder anterior corneal astigmatism there better be something 90 degrees away to explain why the patient in the clinic at the four opters asking for astigmatic correction at 90. And in this particular patient, these areas of purple elevation are remarkably high, 47 microns high. So the topographic component can often be quite significant and needs to be considered. When building 4C software, I also wanted to build on the work of Doug Koch and others who look at the effect of posterior corneal astigmatism. That work was done with toric lenses and I believe is applicable here to LASIK as well. So we pull information from a Pentacam or Galilei G4 into the 4C software to help analyze the posterior corneal astigmatic contribution. The manifest refraction is the spherocylindrical lens that's best correcting the vision for that patient. And if you think about what's happening to the light, as light first enters the eye, it strikes the anterior cornea and any anterior corneal astigmatism begins to bend the light. T stands for topographic features where the GIS software is able to analyze the refractive effect of eliminating this area of purple, this topographic elevation. The light travels through the cornea, leaves the posterior cornea. So the posterior corneal astigmatism plays a role. And then finally, the light enters the lens and any lenticular astigmatism also bends the light. We can measure the manifest astigmatism. We can measure the anterior and posterior corneal astigmatism. Through the GIS software forces, we can identify the topographic contribution to it. And with four of the five variables, we can then use vector mathematics to solve for the missing fifth component, lenticular or internal astigmatism, which currently can't be measured. When you have all five variables in hand, then the software can give you the most accurate astigmatic treatment for that eye using topography guided LASIK. So again, the GIS software will identify these areas of topographic elevation that are going to be removed by the topography guided laser. They assess it a vector quantity, a refractive quantity of magnitude and direction, a vector. There is a vector for the anterior corneal astigmatism, a vector for the posterior corneal astigmatism, and a vector for the lenticular component.
So how does this actually work in practice? Well, this video is gonna show how the software works. The patient's name is brought forward first. The eye is identified. The topography treatment map is pulled into the 4 software. The patient's manifest refraction is automatically pulled in. The varios, placido disc, anterior corneal astigmatisms pulled in. The pentacam data is pulled in for the anterior and posterior cornea. We can analyze the eye in less than 30 seconds. We get the correct sphere, which has been adjusted with a nomogram. We get the correct magnitude of astigmatism and the correct axis that should be treated. In addition, the surgeon is given a vector diagram to better understand the optics of this particular eye. There is a green vector arrow for the corneal astigmatism. There is a red vector arrow for the lenticular and hidden here is the purple arrow for the top topographic components. What are the results of using the software? Well, they've been quite good. Last year in 2020, we published in JCRS. This was a four US center study looking at a double arm, non-masked, non-randomized retrospective chart review. Three, over 300 eyes were looked at two different uh, arms. One group of patients who had been planned using the manifest astigmatism magnitude and axis for Contura and the second group using four cities to determine the correct uh, astigmatism treatment. The results were both groups showed excellent results with topography guided LASIK. Both groups, the manifest plan and the four cities plan achieved 20, 20 or better uncorrected vision at three months in 95% or more of patients. But at the 2015 or better level, this is where four cities pulled ahead and there were statistically significant more eyes had 2016 or better uncorrected vision when planned with the 4 c software as opposed to being planned with the manifest refraction. If we compare the data from the 4 cities planned Contura to what was seen in the FDA, 4 cities outperformed the FDA study for Contura. At the 2015 level, 63% of eyes treated with the 4 cities planned Contura achieved 2015 or better vision at three months. Why is this significant? For the FDA study, no fewer than three corneal experts looked at the topography for every cornea before it was entered into the study. And they only chose patients who had almost perfect corneas with very few topographic irregularities. Whereas in this study, it was all comers, a normal clinic where every patient walking in with some very messy corneas and still four cities outperformed the FDA study. People said, well, that's great, but this is only looking at about uh, 300 plus eyes. Dr. Tom Tuma on the West Coast has just produced data looking at over 2000 eyes. He has at three months post-op, 100% of the eyes seeing 2025 or better and 99.7% at 2020 or better. So a much larger cohort. But these are retrospective studies and much more powerful is a prospective, carefully controlled study. This is being concluded right now. It is uh, being carried out at four centers in the United States using four cities to plan the Contura. This is looking at 90% of the data. The full 100% data set will be presented at ACRS. What's impressive here is that 100% of the patients in this study treated with four cities plan Contura were 20, 20 or better uncorrected. And 89% were 2015 or better. These are remarkable results. In purple, we see that these patients chosen for this study had excellent best corrected vision before surgery. We wanted patients who preoperatively could see very well with their glasses. Four cities beats these patients. Their uncorrected is far superior to their best corrected before surgery. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mark. That was really excellent. Uh, we had one quick question from Cindy Roberts who wanted to know, have you considered uh, biomechanics at all in some of this planning? That is one of our next steps. So yes, we are looking at both OCT and also Pentacam data on corneal densiometry to see how that may also uh, perhaps help us improve our outcomes.